Now, President Trump kicked off Tuesday with a very long, incoherent rant focused on a uh, House hearing that talked about the Mueller report. Uh, now, Trump tweeted this out, quote, Jerry Nadler's Trump bashing show is a bust. Headline, New York Post, Fox and Friends. The greatest witch hunt of all time continues. All crimes were by the other side. Oh, my God. But the committee refuses to even take a look. Deleting 33,000 emails is the real obstruction and much more. What do you mean? Much more? What? Okay, look. You want to talk about the Clinton server, right? I guess he appears that there, there, he wants to have an investigation in Hillary Clinton's email server. Well, now, the problem with that server is that it, it was just that you shouldn't have a private server. Why? It's because you don't you want that server to have classified material that is unprotected because it can be hacked. While Donald Trump, during the election, said, I want Russia to hack the emails to find the 33,000 missing emails, which, of course, she said she contends that they're all personal emails. And so they're of no value when it comes to any sort of investigation. Well, try telling that to a Trump supporter or a QAnon person who thinks, oh, no, 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 this is proof that Pizzagate is real. Hillary Clinton is uh, actually a lizard person and that Trump is the Messiah. It's in the emails. We just got to find them. Just got to find those 33,000 e deleted emails. And look, while it looked really bad, right? And by the way, this is, this is, this is not what the investigation uh, was about, right? I mean, it, during the election, they did talk about those emails. And they were incredibly damaging, by the way. And as damaging as they were, and as damaging as a private server was, and I've talked about that, it actually wasn't considered criminal. It was considered incredibly negligent. And I would agree with that assessment. However, when it comes to campaign finance violations, as well as obstructing an official investigation, well, that's criminal, right? No matter who does it. And in this case, it happened to have been Donald Trump with at least two different documented felonies, according to the report. Now, the committee, of course, refuses to take a look at back at Hillary Clinton, right? Because under Republicans, they did. They did look at all this stuff. And this is under the FBI, which was not a liberal organization, right? They looked at all this stuff. They looked at Benghazi, and they found absolutely nothing. But then again, Donald Trump still says, you know, the criminality is on the other side. No, you know what sounds criminal? Influencing the DNC primary. That seems, it's not criminal. But boy, it sure feels like a lot of people got robbed. I know we did. I know I feel robbed by the whole thing, but not necessarily criminal. So what is he talking about when he goes to the old crimes were, cre were, were done by the other side? He's just projecting at this point. But he's going to continue to try to make his point by quoting Lindsey Graham, one of Donald Trump's biggest bootlickers. He says, quote, Mueller has spoken. And actually he has. But it, as you can see, he's not going to say, what Mueller actually said, he said, he found no collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians. Not enough evidence. Uh, the bottom line is what the Democrat House is doing is trying to destroy the Trump presidency. Which has been a tremendous success. And I can assure you that we're done with the Mueller investigation in the Senate. I don't know why I was using a Trump voice when that's Lindsey Graham. Uh, they could talk to John Dean until the cows come home. We're not doing anything in the Senate regarding the Mueller report. We're going to harden our infrastructure against 2020. Now, interestingly enough, they didn't actually find that quote from Lindsey Graham. It only came from Donald Trump. Okay. Well, interesting. Uh, but okay. Has Mueller spoken? Again, I just mentioned yes. He said not enough uh, evidence of a criminal conspiracy involving Russia, but as I pointed out, tons of obstruction. Which, again, is a, is a crime. Uh, and also campaign finance violations. Those are also a crime. Okay, we should look into that. We should investigate that. Maybe we should investigate uh, or open up impeachment hearings so we can bring all of Donald Trump's criminality to light, especially when it comes to his financial crimes. 
like possible money laundering. That would be an interesting thing, wouldn't it? Uh, now, Trump, now, okay. Let, let me just get to Lindsey Graham for a minute here, right? Lindsey Graham is so nakedly partisan and pro-Trump on almost all issues. I was incredibly surprised when he was one of the people that actually pushed back against Donald Trump when it came to arming the Saudis. I honestly don't know what that decision is from. It could be him just not wanting to give uh, Muslims weapons. Okay, well, that would track for Lindsey Graham, I guess. Uh, but in this case, it's actually the right thing to do because the Saudi Arabians were, uh, are using those weapons to kill innocent Yemeni citizens or civilians. So I guess in that point, he may be doing it for the wrong reasons, but he's actually doing the right thing. Fair enough. But the point is, Lindsey Graham almost always agrees with Donald Trump. And Lindsey Graham probably knows that impeachment would be a disaster for Donald Trump and the Republican Party, as it would expose criminality and put them on the spot for defending that criminality. And so that's why they're like, no, no, no impeachment, no impeachment, no impeachment. Don't do it. No, it's going to help Trump. And here's Nancy Pelosi, the, what is it? She calls herself a master legislature. And she just goes, oh, yeah, no, you're right. It would help Trump more than it would hurt him. No, that's completely wrong. Completely wrong. Uh, but anyway, more tweets here. Uh, after that, Trump says this. Presidential harassment. Of course. <laughs> now, there's some responses on social media to that. Um, Michelangelo uh, Sinareo says, uh, Trump is just a child screaming out in anger and frustration which I think is fairly accurate because at least he's got the mind of a child. Um, there's also this tweet, which is great, um, which was first, I think, one of the first to be deleted because of a typo. Now, that does not necessarily happen all the time or a lot because generally he just leaves the typos in there. But this one he felt, oh, no, too obvious of a typo. I'm going to have to delete it. I'm going to have to fix it. Uh, it said... Uh, and this was a response to a Bloomberg piece. European landmarks have, question, uh, have a question they desperately need answering. How do you stop the tourists from coming? Uh, and Donald Trump replied, this is because the euro and other currencies are devalued against the dollar, putting the U.S. at a big disadvantage. The Fed interest rate, uh, rate way too high, added to ridiculous quantitative tightening. They don't have a clue. I, I don't know how that relates to the other one. But hey, uh, I guess, um, to which Aaron Rupar responded, they don't have a clue, Trump claims, of a Fed in which he personally chosen four of the five sitting members. Well, he does. that doesn't matter, though. Donald Trump could appoint all five, and he would still throw them under the bus. Bruce Fulton says, this would be a terribly dangerous thing for a president of the U.S. to say about the Federal Reserve. If anybody took anything this president says uh, seriously, uh, St. Journal says gibberish. And the author of the Bloomberg piece said this, quote, No, Mr. Trump, it has nothing at all to do with the euro. Nothing about the exchange rate movements in the last 15 years can induce a big increase in tourism. The real reasons are named in the piece. Okay, fair enough, right? But good luck getting him to read that or anything. He doesn't read his briefings, doesn't do his job, his campaigns, eats hamburgers and tweets lies. Presidential harassment, though, as he calls me, is nothing more than actually people trying to hold him accountable. So, of course, you know, if you're a criminal trying to hold him accountable, oh, it's going to feel like harassment. No, but you want real presidential harassment. This is what it is. Look at Benghazi. Something like seven investigations, nine investigations, something like that. Nonstop hearings where Republicans themselves who spearheaded this, found absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Funny how you don't hear anything about Benghazi anymore. Very strange. Or how about the literal birther nonsense? Where they said, this president is illegitimate, illegitimate, because he's not an American. How low can you go? Well, if you're a Republican, pretty damn low. How is that not presidential harassment? That's real presidential harassment. Now, as usual, 
It's the whining and crying of a thin-skinned idiot trying to project his own criminality to the others. That's what this is, and that's what these tweets are. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc., we're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYTNation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.